Keep it well, please. Could you please reply in chat window just to test that everything is fine? Okay, I see it on replies. Okay, so we have five, five, five minutes left. Uh, Everybody is coming, so let's wait five minutes and we will start in five minutes. Uh, you can reply in chat window that you hear me well and I will also turn on my colleagues okay let's try yep And one more. Okay. Tanya? Yeah, I'm okay, here. We hear you. Okay, we hear you as well. Great. And one more speaker. One, two. Yep. Евгения Синева, are you here? Yep. Okay, I think we have everybody. So, um, four minutes left uh, and we, we will start. So everybody can, you know, make a cup of coffee or tea, early green tea or breakfast tea, whatever you drink. Okay, guys, I'll turn off your sound and later turn on it again. Okay, and Tatiana. Where's Tatiana? I see. Okay.
Okay, we are starting in one minute. Okay, guys. Uh, I think we can we can start. Uh, everybody's here. Some of our guests are coming. So uh, I'm really I'm really happy to see so many from all over the world. I see there are some from United States, from uh, from other part in Europe, from Stockholm and uh, Madrid. So it's it's really a great pleasure for us and honor to to speak with you today and uh, let me introduce myself uh, i'm a founder of mba 25 uh, and uh, today we decided to start a new series of webinars for business schools and we hope that will be only the first uh, webinar we are doing right now later we will uh, we will try to make the same uh, webinar for you uh, regarding other markets and today we decided to start from uh, Eastern and Central Europe uh, we choose this market because we are very familiar with this market uh, and we have been doing business here for last uh, 15 years so uh, we do hope that today you will get a lot of uh, very valuable insights and uh, if you have any questions, you are welcome to, to type it right in the chat. Uh, there is my colleague who will be monitoring all questions and we will try to answer all, all the questions as soon as possible. Maybe, maybe we will miss something, but anyway, we will reply you later uh, with our answers on, on your chat. So uh, let me introduce uh, who will be speaking for you today. Uh, we decided to make a to, to, to make a mix of uh, different points uh, on on the, on, a, on one problem, let's say so. Uh, so my first colleague is Genia Signora. He's a head of test prep company MBA Strategy, and she will share with you some researches we made in the previous years. Uh, who are applicants in Eastern, Eastern and Central Europe, and a lot of other different uh, and useful uh, data uh, she has. And Tatiana Skiba, she's account manager. He have been, he, she has been uh, working with many business schools. Some of some of you uh, maybe work with her, uh, and she's really uh, familiar with a uh, uh, with the process of selection uh, and a timeline. So how applicants uh, consider business schools, how they how they what kind of channel. We are pretty sure uh, her part of, of presentation will be very useful for you. So if you have any questions, just type it in the chat. Uh, okay, let's start. So just a very quick data for you that in Central and Eastern Europe, as of 2017, uh, about 340 million people uh, live in Eastern and Central Europe, and there are about 20, 25 different countries. Some of them are pretty big, some of them are smaller, but anyway, it's a very big uh, amount, a very big number of people. So uh, we can compare this number with, uh, let's say, United States or some other countries. So it's uh, the population is huge. And I checked how many uh, GMAT scores uh, had been sent in a previous years. It was about uh, 18,000 uh, GMAT scores uh, uh, had been sent in a, in a previous year. So my question to you, is your business school presented, represented on this market or you are missing your, this opportunity? So let's investigate a little bit deeper. 
Uh, we decided today to welcome you uh, with this slide. So we decided just to pick up some uh, logos from uh, from from a. Uh, from our guests and put here. So you see that we have a lot of different schools here from United States, from Asia, from from uh, Europe, from China. So it's a, it's a great pleasure and honor for us. Okay, let's let's move forward. Um, okay, who we are? Just a quick brief. We connect the world best business schools and universities with high caliber candidates. So this is our mission. This is our let's say a um, model that's what we are doing we are doing this in a different ways uh we are doing some kind of offline events we are doing online events we are doing lead generation so everything that could help you to reach these candidates in a different ways uh, we are mostly focused on a two part of the world and we don't want to be in any part of the world cannot deliver really high caliber uh, candidates so we are mostly present in north america uh i'm right now in a in a austin uh texas where uh, where is our uh, us headquarter and the other part of our uh, team uh is located in cent central and eastern europe and this is our part of the region where we are working in East, eastern and central europe so today we will share answers on three main questions. So what is the specific? What are the specifics of the European market? So uh, if you are considering entering this market, you have to know what is the difference, and we will share this data with you. How to enter the market clearly? So just believe us. Uh, we observe different strategies, different activities from I don't know, maybe 30, 35 business schools who, who who did it in the previous years and so we see some successful cases and, and, and not very successful so we will try to share it with you the third uh, question what marketing tools we recommend uh, applying what works and what doesn't so uh, i hope uh, you also will find this topic uh, very helpful for you okay so let's start if everything is clear with the uh, with our three main topics we'll share today uh, we can go on great so let me let me explain the first question uh, what are the specifics of european market so we we, we try to we analyze a lot of data we discussed brainstormed a little bit and we found four main uh, specifics of the european and central and europe uh, central and eastern european markets so the first one that we see that there are three big three four maybe big markets pretty mature market but there are 10 15 uh, smaller and rich markets so just let me give you an example for example russia could be considered as a really big market with a uh, up to 2000 gmat test takers and a lot of people pretty familiar what is MBA, what is a master's degree. Uh, with all these sanctions and with all this situation, what is going right now, people still applying and applying because, you know, they are kind of, they want to study and, and, they, and, and, and they, they don't care about all the situations. So Russia is still very big market. And for example, let's say uh, Poland, Ukraine, uh, maybe some uh, one more country could be considered as mature and pretty big. And but there are a lot of different markets like, for example, Azerbaijan, uh, Armenia, Kazakhstan, uh, Georgia, uh, Bulgaria. So it's a pretty small countries. Uh, but on the other hand, we are doing some events in all these countries because there are a lot of big corporations oil companies tech companies and you know if you need two three five applicants from this part of, of the world you can find it you can find them here and uh, they can pay for their tuition for their living so my advice to you uh don't limit your activity with only one country so there is a one two big markets and there are a long tail of pretty good pretty rich 
uh, new markets that you can consider. And you don't need to spend, I don't know, thousands of dollars flying to the, let's say, to Georgia or I don't know, to Kazakhstan or some other country. You just need to use more efficient ways to, to, to reach this market. We will talk a little bit later about this uh, approaches. Uh, Okay, what is the second uh, point that you, you have to consider? Uh, I, I, I would say that there is a very important point in marketing uh, in Eastern Central Europe. Applicants check information from at least three, four different sources. What does it mean? So that multi-channel marketing, marketing works and very well here and it really matters. So for you, uh, what does it mean? That if you're using only one source, for example, you're using only offline presentation, let's say. You, you just decided to, to, to come on the market once per year. You didn't do any, let's say, homework. You didn't uh, make a um, uh, promotion before. You didn't use social networks. You didn't use, I don't know, any, any other sources. So. Uh, in this case, it doesn't work very well. The penetration of mobile devices, penetration of internet uh, is very high here. So you can use, you have to use different sources. And uh, I, I, I would say from least expensive to most expensive. And in this case, this mix of marketing works very well. Uh, so please consider this when you are doing your... Uh, when you are planning your activities on the market. The third pretty important point that you, you have to understand that a lot of these, uh, uh, a lot of these countries, uh, they are from, from a Soviet Union. So many, many years ago, people, you know, uh, uh, didn't know a lot about uh, education abroad. But right now, after 20, 25 years of independence, they are, they, they, they're very familiar, but on the other hand, they still uh, don't have enough information about financing. So uh, we we are receiving a lot of questions from them. Uh, how can I pay? Uh, what sources uh, are available for me? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. How 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 does it work? Uh, I don't know. Uh, lo how loans? Uh, can we use loans? Can we use scholarships? So. Uh, we, we heard a lot of these questions and it what does it mean it doesn't mean that they don't have money to pay they usually have uh, at least 50 percent sometimes higher to pay from their pocket maybe from from their companies uh, it means that they are very uh, they have a shortage of information about this so please try to share this information in a different ways. Uh, you can share this with us. We, we can share the, uh, this information with them. So uh, just please remember about this, because in the United States, I know that from you know from a high from a from a college, everybody knows uh, the, what they can use to to cover their uh, education. They know a lot everything about loans, student loans, and some other sources. They have a credit ranking, ra ra uh, credit score. So in, in, a, in a Central and Eastern Europe, they don't have this. So uh, please help them to understand how they can cover their tuition and living costs and so, and, and so on. And uh, I would say the first point, uh, some kind of specifics of uh, Central and Eastern Europe, that usually that what we see uh, after after 15 years of working here, that uh, basically on average, math is better than English. So what does it mean? If you if you just check in a, uh, their GMAT and you are checking uh, what, what is the split between a quantitative and, and verbal section, usually you will see a uh, pretty good mess and a little bit uh, a little bit worse uh, with a verbal section. So uh, I would say it's because of uh, pretty good uh, mass education uh, in in school and uh, universities and not, not very well uh, education, not very well, not enough practice of English in, in some 
university. So this is a kind of like a general, uh, very, very wide specifics that I would like to share with you. And what is important and what it will be very useful for you that there are some other specifics of European marketing. A lot of, a lot of you ask questions uh, regarding marketing, how to market yourself. And we decided to make this slide for you to show uh, that in digital era, there are a lot of digital ways how you can reach your applicant. But all these uh, platforms, they, they, they work very different in different countries. So let me, let me give you an example. For example, Facebook. Everybody know Facebook. Everybody know Mark Zuckerberg, but it's it work very different. For example, from our experience, uh, Facebook doesn't work very well in Russia. Why? Just because there is a very big and very famous uh, social network that called uh, Vkontakte, VK, and a lot of Russian people they use this network versus Facebook. So at this moment, Facebook is open. You can use it in Russia. But the problem is that it isn't very popular. The same situation is in Germany. We we will have a event in Frankfurt maybe in three days, and after two or three years of promotion in Frankfurt, we see that Facebook is not the best way to promote yourself in Germany or in Turkey, for example. The same situation. They have some specific, uh, a little bit smaller uh, social networks that you have to use. It's better to use in in these countries. So uh, when you're entering any market from Central or Eastern Europe, ask yourself, ask us if you don't know what is what is what is the most common social network here. What is the uh, percentage, uh, you know, uh, of using this network among uh, population? One more example, Instagram. Uh, during the last three years, we see that it's, it's becoming more and more popular. And, um, you know, I did a, a, some kind of homework yesterday. I checked uh, uh, what business schools uh, have Instagram and who, who, who doesn't have. So I found some uh, business schools who still, uh, you know, uh, don't pay enough attention. And, and, I, and I have to say that the popularity of Instagram is increasing here and it's very easy you can just check the photo you can just check information and you know uh, continue to do what 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 you what you did before so my advice if you are targeting audience from 18 to 35 year old about this range and demographic uh, please consider instagram is a good source of information uh for for your applicant Twitter. What we can say about Twitter? Uh, I know that Twitter is very popular in, in United States and a lot of people and even president of United States tweet every day, but it's not the same story here. So uh, let's say in Ukraine, in Poland, in Russia, uh, in Kazakhstan, Twitter is not very popular. Uh, I don't want you know to discuss and spend your time why it's not very popular but this is like a reality and uh, what i can recommend uh, i i can recommend to use uh different messengers uh for example uh telegram it's a it's a, a messenger that was developed by one famous guy uh, from from russia and you know this is a very uh, famous uh, tool and a lot of people they have a channel in telegram a lot of brands have the, they have a channel and you can put information and your applicant could subscribe for this kind of uh for, for this kind of channel and you will you will be getting a your audience quicker and it will be growing uh, i highly recommend to use uh, Viber or WhatsApp, it's not very useful sometimes. I mean, how you can manage it, but as a source of information, I would say that Messenger could be a good alternative, uh, you know, uh, to Twitter. So this is our advice, and be very careful when you're using Twitter as a main source of uh, uh, of targeting your audience uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. And one more example that there are some specifics that, for example, LinkedIn. I know that a lot of you, maybe 99% of you using LinkedIn, right? 
but unfortunately in some countries it's blocked so uh you cannot use so actually you can share this information you can share information about business school you can put i don't know some posts in linkedin but unfortunately for example in russia it's fully blocked so nobody can i, I let's say uh, only one or two percent uh, of applicant uh, applicants of your applicants know how to use vpn uh, but the rest will not be using virtual private network you know to to check linkedin so uh, this is a pretty pretty useful information okay we have a question do you have any advice about how we can manage multiple social accounts for different countries my advice you don't need to use a lot of accounts you just need to use a, a if you're uh, maybe uh, could, could you please uh, specify a question I, I, are you do you mean uh, different social networks or different accounts of the same social networks it's a little bit different story so if you are talking about different social networks uh, my advice just to use one or two so maybe up to two different for example let's say a uh, uh, facebook and instagram facebook or uh telegram so you don't need to use everything uh, it's a pretty pretty time consuming and you you need a, a social manager to do this job uh, in a, on in a specific uh, uh market and what is more important I recommend to find a social manager who speaks uh, some of some regional language you want to you want to target. Uh, yeah, so th this is, was your question. Different networks. Uh, I I recommend to use up to two. You don't need a lot. Uh, for example, you will have a coverage like eighty to eighty five percent if you will be using, for example. Uh, just give me an example. In Russia, it will be, let's say, Vkontakte and, for example, Telegram. Just believe me, it's a very easy to prove my words that you will have a coverage like a 60, 60, 75 percent of applicants. Uh, so this is my advice. Additionally, you can get like a 5 percent from other source, but maybe it doesn't worth spending time. OK. Uh, that's that that's what i want to share you with you regarding uh regarding uh, specifics of marketing so right now uh we're ready to share with you some other portion of information regarding the test prep and test prep clients what they what they are thinking about how they choose so let me let me pass my yeah one second Okay, Yevgenia, where is my dear Yevgenia? It's right here. Okay, yeah, I see. Make a present. Okay, Zhenya, can you, can you? Hi, oh. yeah, can you oh, hear yeah, me? Oh, yeah, we hear you. Mm -hmm. Yep, go on. Okay. Uh, the only thing, I'm not sure whether I can uh, switch between the slides because I, I don't... One second. Uh, one second. I'm making present. you... Okay. Uh, okay. How to make a presenter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think I made... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can go on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll let me introduce myself and thank you very much for uh, joining our webinar today. Um, so I'll uh, tell a little bit about uh, myself and about the com uh, my company. So uh, my name is Jenia and uh, I run MBA Strategy. Uh, I guess a lot of uh, people might know that it's um, um, one of the leading uh, companies in our region. So um, we do test prep services, we do admissions consulting services, and um, we work very closely, very closely um, with uh, candidates who have already made the decision to apply. So these are you know, kind of hot candidates who uh, go and take their GMAT and uh, they 
also at the stage of choosing the business school. And um, I uh, want to uh, share some data with you. So uh, quite recently, we uh, took uh, 418 students that we know of, or our students that we know that they got admitted to business schools and we conducted uh, research among those students. And these are MBA strategies stu students, our uh, test prep students who reported that they got ad admitted to uh, a, a particular school. And uh, so uh, uh, among, among those 418 students, there were, um, the majority was from Russia, so 61% from Russia, 22% uh, from Ukraine, 10% uh, from Kazakhstan, and 7% from other smaller markets uh, of which Dmitry was uh, talking about. So we had uh, clients uh, from Azerbaijan, Armenia, uh, Belarus, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Georgia. So all those smaller markets, every year there is one or two pe people who report admissions to one school or um, an, an another school. Uh, and um, so those, uh, you, you all probably know the GMAC official numbers, uh, and also uh, I'm going to repeat something that Dima has already said, that Russia reports about 2,000 people a year who take GMAT, Ukraine reports about 500, um, or 4, 4, to, 4 to 500, Kazakhstan reports about uh, 3, 3 to 400, and uh, other smaller countries report to up to 100, it can be. 98 or, one, or 110. So these are our uh, students and um, I also want to uh, share, share with you uh, what programs they apply, applied, they were admitted. Zenia, can yeah. I add one, one, one more one uh, very important point that I, I, yeah, that I, I missed to, to, to say that you, you can ask me what is what is a point to let's say to work on a ten different markets or five different markets uh, that all together have I don't know let's say ten thousand GMAT test takers. The point is that yeah in Texas for example there are about just in Texas or just in California or in New York or in some other big countries there is like a ten thousand applicants only in one state. But the difference that competition is a fierce here, it's a black ocean. So in a Eastern Europe, if you combine in two, three, four countries, you will not have this kind of competition. You are working on a pretty mature on the one hand, but on the other hand, not very overcrowded market. So just please remember about this. This is a point in your strategy that could be very helpful. Yeah, that's what my plan. Yeah. Uh so um, those 418 students, so the data was collected uh, from 2013 to 2017. Uh, and uh, so 44% of those students went to do an MBA. And here are some, uh, and we only considered full-time MBA applicants. We didn't, um, we didn't take, uh, take into consideration um, executive mas masters, uh, so only full-time uh, uh, full candidates. And so the minimum age of uh, the survey was 22, and in fact it was uh, a 22-year-old person uh, go going to a silver cohort in Yale. And the uh, the uh, the uh, maximum age was 49. So a 49-year-old candidate from Ukraine, in fact, uh, went uh, to Washington to study uh, MBA. Um, uh, the next uh, uh, category is masters, uh, and that includes actually executive masters. That includes executive master in finance or advanced mas master in finance. So uh, the minimum age of candidates or of the admitted uh, students was 21 and the maximum was uh, 36. And um, it, uh, the rest, 18% of candidates are um, um, executive MBA uh, candidates. And the minimum age here is 27 and the maximum is 40. Three. 
And uh, normally, uh, can, uh, so from the data that we collect, collected and compared with different business schools, it, it turns out that uh, Ukrainian, Kazakh and Russian candidates specifically uh, happen to be younger than average uh, in the executive uh, MBA, in an executive MBA class. And that very often that happens uh, because um, in uh, this part of, of the world, Russia, um, Eastern Europe, uh, Central, uh, Central, uh, Central Asia, uh, people uh, grow in their co corporate environments much quicker and, uh, and as, as because it's more flexible. It, and also they, if they have an opportunity to start their own business, there is an opportunity to do really well in their business. So at 31 or 32, uh, they feel it's time to go further, to grow, to grow more, to develop their business further. So they apply for uh, executive MBA programs. So this is a distribution of our students. And um, here are some more uh, interesting uh, stats. Uh, so the gender breakdown, we looked at uh, who uh, goes where. Like, uh, so full-time MBA, 65% um, uh, of admitted candidates are male and 35 female, which um, uh, so my initial assumption when we were doing this research, my initial assumption was that uh, the, uh, the percentage of female uh, students will be smaller, but uh, it actually we were ple pleasantly surprised, although it's not uh, the percentage that I would personally like it to be. I would like it to be at least 50%. Uh, none, nonetheless, I think for uh, uh, this region, it's a, it's a good it's a sort of a good, good percentage. Uh, with executive MBA candidates, uh, the tendency is that they are uh, predominantly male candidates. So, and uh, females uh, uh, constitute only 27% of the admitted students. So, these are all admi admitted students. <clears throat> um, Another interesting characteristic that we looked at uh, who was um, getting um, accepted into the schools and who, who, who was applying and getting accepted. And we looked at whether those people were entrepreneurs or whether they uh, were employees. So did they have their own business or did they uh, were hired people in their companies? And uh, the interesting uh, story here is that among MBA students from uh, this region, uh, only 4% of entrepreneurs go to, to pursue an MBA and 96% uh, uh, are full-time employees in different companies, which um, uh, it is, uh, it might be um, logical, it might not be, but it, se it seems that people who have their own companies uh, they see, uh, they seem to stick with their companies. They don't go and pursue an MB, MBA, and they wait until they're um, older, more experienced, more mature, and uh, they uh, wait until they grow to the level where they can go and do an executive MBA. So if we look at the executive MBA category, so 20% of admitted candidates from our region were entrepreneurs uh, business and business owners, and on, only 73% were hired employees. Um, <clears throat> Also, um, I wanted to share with you what's going on in uh, their heads. Uh, when, so when people decide, make, make, make this decision, they say, I want to go and do an MBA degree, or uh, uh, why? The, what's the reason why they want to do it? And the first, uh, the top motivation is obviously they, they want to change career. And um, at the early stages when they're preparing for GMAT, normally the change in career can be, um, this, uh, can be articulated in the following words. I want to become a consultant. I want to join uh, McKinsey, BCG, or a, any other consulting company. Uh, or I want to join a tech company. So uh, they express their motivations in those terms. So they want to they want to do something different from what they're doing right now. 
Um, the second motivation is to set up their own business. So, um, and that, that can be expressed in a sentence, I want to do something of my own. Uh, the reason, the reason uh, still, a lot of people in uh, this region, which is uh, post-Soviet region, do not have the you know entrepreneurial gene in their blood. So it's uh, entrepreneurship is something we, I guess, uh, this region is not uh, yet uh, quite familiar, not quite comfortable with. Although there are a lot of entrepreneurs, but still, it's a uh, young young uh, culture. Uh, in terms of entrepreneurship, so a lot of people uh, consi consider business schools uh, to um, to go to uh, to a business school, to do an MBA, and learn how to set up, uh, how to do a business, and how to do it right. Um, number three motivation is to advance uh, their career, and. Um, People very often say this thing, I want to work for an industry leader. So it means that at the moment they might be working for a small com company and they want to join an international company in the same industry or they want to uh, develop within their company. Um, and the fourth motiv motivation, which I think is a characteristic of um, this particular market uh, it's uh, and it, it crops up quite often in conversations with people uh, people say uh, yeah I just want I want to work anywhere but here and that's quite quite common uh, in, in this in this region the, the, especially I think the, this might be a characteristic of a lot of Ukrainian ca can candidates I guess, I guess because of, uh, of some turmoil of the past years. So, um, but it's uh, also dom dominant in Russia as, as well. Um, also, I wanted to share with you some, um, you know, st statistics about where people come from, like what industries they come, come from. Uh, so uh, the, the major industry that supplies MBA students uh, to, to you uh, in, our, in this region is a fin finan financial industry. So it's uh, banking, corporate and retail banking, it's um, investment banking, uh, it's uh, financial advisory services and also private equity. So it's about 30%. Uh, of, of candidates come from uh, uh, th this particular industry. Industry. Uh, another thirty percent come from consulting companies, and uh, this is natural because consulting companies, a lot of them have a, a tradition of uh, sending their uh, consultants for an MBA. And in general, in consul consulting, it's obvious that uh, if you want to grow, you, go, you, do, you do an MBA. 13% uh, um, of uh, candidates and students work in IT, tech companies, and telecom companies. And 9% uh, work in energy, oil, gas, mining, heavy manufacturing. And I uh, believe that this uh, particular entry is very specific to this region. So, because of all the oil, because of all the oil, gas, and gas companies, uh, and uh, the rest, 10%, uh, it's an assortment of different industries, uh, among which uh, it's uh, FMCG, it's uh, legal services, real estate, um, some of, uh, perhaps some other uh, industries. Two, but uh, the distribution is uh, sort of it's just like one percent from this industry, one percent from that industry. So it's quite ins insignificant. So um, yeah, this is the um, information that I wanted to share with you, and I hope uh, that it uh, gave you some sort of insight into the uh, candidates' my, minds. And uh, mm, uh, what you need to remember, these are people who have already made their decision to apply and who got admitted. Um, and 
my uh, yeah, our yeah. next I, speaker will talk about you know people who are pre-decision stage, which I guess will be even more insightful. Thank you, Dima. Yeah, that you're right. There are only people who were admitted, and there are I don't know maybe five, four thousand of people who out of these numbers, and they could be also very uh, useful uh, part of uh, of your promotion strategy. If you have any any questions regarding uh, Genia's uh, part of presentation, you're welcome to ask. Uh, you can type your questions regarding uh, students, test takers, uh, and so on. And what what I would like to add that we we recommend to to make a first touch with your prospective uh, applicant not when they uh, when when they got their let's say 700 score we highly recommend to do it a little bit earlier like a one year before when they're still considering where to go what school to choose because what we see that many schools they're just coming and want to grab uh, candidates that that have already passed the GMAT and they already have some kind of uh, list of schools in their mind. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome. If you don't have, we can um, move further. Okay, Zhenya, you can turn off the sound and I will pass my word to Tatiana. Okay, one second. Mm -hmm. Okay, very solid, Tatiana. Tatiana is right here. Okay, Tatiana, do you hear me well? Yep. Yes. yes, I hear you. Yep. Do you hear me? Yep. Let's go. Uh -huh. So I have the possibility to uh, move the slides, yeah? Yeah. 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 Okay, great. So uh, hello to everyone from rainy Frankfurt. Uh, I hope the weather in your city is uh, is sunny. <laughs> but despite it, I hope it's uh, your mood is sunny as well. Uh, so my name is Tatiana Skiba. Uh, many of you already know me uh, and uh, I work with uh, the schools and with the candidates and uh, I try to support uh, all of, all of uh, these people, all of these persons to uh, reach their goals. Yeah. So uh, let's start with uh, information I have prepared. Uh, that's it. So uh, on the screen you can see the roadmap of the effective ways to enter the European market. Uh, generally, uh, on uh, every market we have uh, four main channels, uh, main marketing channels to to reach our goals in inviting people with very good profiles. Uh, the first is uh, internal MBA 25 resources, which means uh, mainly our MBA 25 databases. So uh, during the last four years, uh, we have uh, around 10,000 people in our uh, database. Uh, the general 25,000. It's uh, MBA plus masters plus executive MBA candidates. Um, the most effective type of promotion for us is mailings to MBA 25 database. This base includes candidates registered for MBA 25 online and offline activities, downloaded our brochures and uh, other channels. Um, these profiles include uh, name, contact, info about education, job and program of interest of the potential candidate. Uh, we work in a synergy also with the databases of uh, MBA strategy, our test prep center, and also fast forward. 
uh, company organizing business tours uh, to most successful companies in the world. Uh, this helps us a lot uh, to build uh, a quality chain of interaction between the candidate preparation, gaining, and application of the best business education. Um, it's very important to contact the candidates very carefully. So we send only relevant information interesting to the person. We monitor the amount of contacts with one candidate. We remove from all the databases people who are, now, who are no longer interested in our activities. Uh, I believe many of uh, you marketers already know about this too. Uh, the open rate of uh, emails containing information from MBA25 is from 35 to 40 percent. Main content rules to increase the open or the click rate of our emails. So the first, uh, laconic content, of course. Uh, then text adaptation according to the mentality of the region. Uh, we always say to our schools, to our partners, then you can ask for any recommendations from our team. Even if we do not provide uh, the, the marketing services to you, and we, could, we can advise you on the best approaches, on the best words and messages inside your mailings to, to create it more effective. So the third, it's, uh, if uh, it's a product promotion, there uh, should be links only to the product page inside the mailing. If it's a promo event, then only event should be referenced so that the person understands the essence of the information. So one mailing should better consist uh, one message, what to do. Tanya, may I add a little bit to this slide? So uh, you, you are getting deeper and deeper in details. So what, what I would like to add that there is a kind of roadmap uh, for, for you, dear guests, that it's like example uh, how how you can go from the first day of your promotion to the last day and you see there are some different examples of activity in every part for example if you're using newsletter please remember that a lot of people getting a huge number of newsletters from all over the world in my inbox I have I don't know 100 maybe uh, mails from a different school some of them they are repeating the same information again and again so it doesn't work very well uh, so try to use uh, non-standard pr promotion methods that we mentioned here video content messengers lead generations and so on partners it's very important Tanya right now in Germany and in Germany just believe us partners really matters so uh, they, they helped a lot uh, and executive search companies could give you more than let's say a Facebook any other sources so this is a kind of example that uh, what you can use versus uh, newsletters only and the same situation regarding such regarding social media so on this slide we just try to show you what could be a like a first second step and so on Yes, yeah, there mm -hmm. is a kind of noise around you, Tanya, but yeah, if, if it will be, I hope it will not be too noisy. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm in, in the Kaboken Center, sorry for this. Yeah, okay, we can so go further. The second, yeah, the second uh, step is the non-standard uh, promotion methods. Uh, they, are very, they take a very important role, as Dmitry said. So, video content. Using videos uh, from past events, video testimonials, videos from workshops uh, is very effective. Then uh, messengers. Uh, cooperation with channel uh, about business literature, gathering our own community in MBA25 messengers. Uh, lead generation. Creating valuable content about business education, test preparation, business tendencies, for example, MBA calendar, GMAT tips, and so on. Uh, event marketing, internal and external. Internal, holding webinar about MBA programs or test preparation before the offline event. In such way, gathering potential MBA audience. 
and external, visiting business events, getting to know participants and invite them personally to our event. Uh, and, and testimonials, cooperation with MBA alumni who would post info about our event or spread among their community. And uh, the last one uh, are personal invitations for specific people. So we call and invite CEOs of top uh, companies in CIS countries, or also we use uh, LinkedIn or their HR managers, and it, uh, it has a very good conversion of people came with very good profiles. Um, then the third step uh, is partners. In order to get audience interested in getting MBA, we cooperate with a range of companies and media resources, namely executive search companies, uh, work very good cooperation with them. Test prep centers, business book publishers, CEO and business clubs, top consulting companies, scholarship companies, and uh, online channels such as uh, about finance, marketing, and management. Uh, in our cooperation with partners, we try to create value for both sides, for our audience, new interesting opportunities, and also for our partners, possibility to engage with our audience. Most effective in bringing the right audience to the events are executive search companies, for example, our partners, Cornerstone, Headhunter, WorkUA, they bring about 25% of quality registrations to our events. Uh, then, test prep centers or business English courses, MBA strategy, English Prime, British Council bring about 20% of quality registrations to MBA 25 activities. And the third are top consulting companies such as PVC, Ersin Young, BCG, Deloitte, KPMG. They bring about 15% uh, of registrations. Uh, this is the data from our last two seasons. So, uh, Anya, let's move of... further. We have 10 minutes left, so we we have a lot of slides to discuss. Okay, okay, sorry, very interesting information. So, social media is uh, very important in CIS. It works like 50% from Facebook, 4% from Instagram, uh, 2 from LinkedIn, and 2 from Messengers. Okay, let's go to next slide. So our team uh, generated seven basic contacts with the future MBA student. First is uh, digital marketing. Creates the value of an MBA and the idea of the business school uh, and uh, provides it to, to the candidate. Then references are very important from the real students and the, from the real alumni. Individual mailings. Um, uh, it's also uh, a method of uh, digital marketing, but uh, we think it's very important uh, to send individual mailings uh, with uh, targeted information of interest to our candidate. And then, individual and co-branding events. Uh, they increase uh, the brand awareness and provide an introduction to the school and its advantages. Players. Generate all information together and allows our candidate to make the perceived choice. Uh, interviews uh, provide the missing information and build uh, the right admission strategy of the candidate. And uh, the last uh, step, very important as for me, is uh, a campus visit, which determines the final choice of our candidate. Uh, Tanya, may I add to this slide? So, what we see, uh, what we usually see are on, on, the, uh, on the market that a lot of schools, I, I would say maybe 60%, 70%, they want to use only fares. Yeah, it's a kind of classical uh, way, but just believers uh, returning investment from this kind is. Uh, from this kind of activity is decreasing, so that's why we're using more and more different other 
activities. So fairs could be the last step. It could be like a, you know, paramount of all your activity, but it's not, it's not the only one. So please remember this and don't repeat the same mistake again and again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next slide uh, shows us uh, our approach and how we recommend to work on the certain market during uh, one year period. Uh, so uh, the first quarter, year one, warm up. Uh, we use content marketing and SMM to build the brand awareness. Uh, quarter two, getting acquainted. We build partnership in the local community. Quarter three, we are ready, deadline one. We run offline and online events to get real applications for our business goals beforehand, which is very important. So quarter four, keep the victory. Uh, while the candidates uh, also choose where to go, so we help you win this game, uh, uh, vice versa your competitors. And uh, the last one, alumni, uh, build a new cycle for the next year. Uh, we work hard to be ready for the new cycle. This includes working with alumni, companies and our partners. Tanya, you missed one step, so uh, let me add. So the, the first part of, of the like a first quarter and the second quarter of the year, it 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 should be about warming up and getting acquainted with the candidates. The second uh, part of uh, the first deadline and the second deadline uh, usually you, you you will have a real com a real meetings real communication with the applicants who will be applying what is more important than sometimes about 25 percent of people they apply in a second deadline so please don't miss this opportunity to catch good candidates uh, you know uh, on the second deadline uh, in, in central and eastern europe and what is even more important that you can grab some really good candidates and you know save your victory keep your keep the victory because you know that a lot of candidates they they, they are blind to different schools so i highly recommend to uh, keep this victory and work in details in work personally with some applicants we had a lot of stories just believe me uh, when uh, our clients tell us something like you know i got a personal call from the dean or from head of admission and i was so surprised that i decided to be a part of this school so uh, it means that they really care if you if you giving them a personal touch so this is what we call keep the victory so keep your client keep your applicant and and the last cycle it's about building communication with a with the students that you accepted so they can help you to build new cycle with a you know uh uh referencing with a with a uh, some kind of presentation that they can do on the market so we are highly recommend to work with the alumni on the market yes totally agree so uh here we show the mb25 candidate pass Registration for the MV25 event is on the first step, both of the candidate and for the team. Then starts pre-selection and preparation time. In approaching candidates, we use a very personal approach. Each candidate has different needs and intentions, and our task is to understand the needs and lead candidates to the right strategy of choosing the school and program. On the other side, there is a risk to overload candidate with the information, uh, so, we created the next algorithm of working together. First, registration. Then our candidate receives the first uh, letter with general information about our event. Then each candidate gets uh, his own account manager and any consultation he needs. A manager goes through candidate profile right after registration and, if needed, ask candidate to add some more information to the profile. After choosing business school for a personal meeting, candidate automatically gets better with information about the chosen schools. 
Uh, if school hasn't approved candidate for impersonal meeting, manager researches in other programs and schools relevant to the candidate profile. One, two weeks before the event, manager calls candidate and gives short consultation about school and the event, after sends more information by email if needed. And before a personal meeting, our candidates receive a short notification in messengers when the meeting is starting. So, uh, summarizing, only relevant, not spam emails between manager and candidate about specific schools and programs. Then, short consultations through phone or Skype uh, before registration and before the event. And reminder, uh, notification in Messenger if you have any meetings appointed. So, uh, the next uh, file uh, shows us the general uh, profile of MBA full-time candidate and also executive MBA candidate. Uh, also, I did some researches about the difference. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's very detailed. So, I will go through the main differences. Um, let's take the MBA, MBA candidate profile. So, the main changes uh, about the age. Uh, people uh, who were born in 1990 uh, uh, were 27% uh, uh, several years ago, and now in 2018, uh, there are 37% of these people. Among the work experience, we see that the years of working experience are increasing uh, among the MBA candidates. Job position, uh, from 42% to 49%, uh, have increased uh, amount of uh, middle managers uh, at our events. Program of interest. More masters and more online programs are now of interest among our candidates. Maybe you also felt such, such changes. Target MBA specialization. Yes? Yeah, I, I think we, we will we will send a recording of the presentation so with all this data. So maybe just a general uh, summary from you and don't need to repeat all uh, all figures. Okay, okay, deal. I can send to all interested people my uh, my analysis. Analysis. Yes. So and uh, let me finish with the effective interaction formats. So, there are some standard and new formats, and uh, um, our team observes that uh, the world is changing very fast, and we should change with the world together. So, uh, among the standard formats are fairs, interviews, info sessions, presentations, and panels. Yes, of course, they work uh, for now, but we think that in future, the formats will be totally new and they will differ a lot. For example, now we have created uh, such approaches as online meetings, fairs and panels, special content events with the school professors, with alumni and students, with HRs from famous companies uh, about, uh, about how MBA uh, could help you in your future. Then campus visits, uh, business breakfast, dinners with alumni, uh, business cases, studies, like when you communicate with the school representatives and have some business cases, networking conversations, and interaction uh, inside, inside successful companies. So MBA 25 highly recommends all of these new formats to try and uh, to uh, do the individual interactions interesting and exciting for your future students. Okay, let me add. Uh, we decided to put this slide uh, because we are visiting a lot of events all over the world and no, not only our events but competitors' events. What we see, sometimes we see like a 50 schools or let's say 25 schools uh, in, in a big hall 
and let's say 50 prospective students in the hall. So it doesn't work. Our advice to you differentiate yourself, use a smaller but more effective approach. You will get a better return on investment. Uh, if you cannot uh, fly to some specific country, you can use uh, different online events. But uh, you can use alumni assistance on, on site. You can use uh, targeting uh, big companies and corporations. That is pretty easy, especially with our help. So uh, our advice on this market to differentiate yourself from the rest because you you know we will be part of the big fair and it's not a very easy to differentiate on the fair only okay tanya thank you thank you for for your information uh uh dear guests if you have any questions uh we are right now at the end uh, of our presentation so if you have any question any i don't know uh information you want to share please uh Please let us know and we will answer any question you may have. Do you have any questions regarding information we share with you? Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, I hope there is information. This presentation was interesting for you, and you found some valuable insights or information. If you have any other questions, uh, please welcome to ask us or send us email or any other request you may have. Uh, I really appreciate your time today uh, and this hour that you spent with us today. Uh, I wish you to find the best applicants in, in, in Central and Eastern Europe. We, we want to make the same webinar regarding some other markets. And we will be glad to receive your requests, what we can share with you, for example, regarding some US states or maybe about some uh, European countries where we work. Uh, we also want to add some uh, people from uh, big uh, corporations to share with you some insights uh, uh, whether they are looking for MBA or master applicants so please let us know and we will send you uh, an inqu inquiry kind of uh, survey so please share with us information that will be valuable for you in the future okay uh, thank you so much I don't see any other questions. Uh, I wish you a good day and, and take care. And good day. Bye.